All right, my last video, we were just about to show color separation in Photoshop. So I'm gonna continue that, but I just wanna remind everyone our process on assignment eight so far. We sketched out how we wanted text to work around our poster, our spot illustration image on a poster. We figured out how to use type, type tools that are vector type tools, and we wanted to get a black vector arranged in a way that works with our illustration or our logo. So this arrangement of letter forms, some of which are augmented and changed and definitely are all hand set, are made to go within these banners. And then this one gets flipped upside down. Right? And so this was the finished arrangement. That's the first thing I ask you to turn in for this assignment. And then this was the colored variation we used. We did this in a raster program, either Photo P or Photoshop, using layer styles on our smart object black type. And then we, we turn on our illustration or our logo. We have our color type on top of it. We add a background. So it's not just solid white and it's no longer a spot illustration. Now it becomes a poster design. And then we just added a, a little white border to our background and we finished it. But this is something we're working at at full resolution, which means it's printable, which means it's at least 300 pixels per inch. And so using Photo P, I kind of pushed it to its limits by doing 9 by 12 inches by 300 per inch with all the varied layers. But now if you want to push it further and get it ready for, for professional printing, you can play with what's called color separation. So I have the link in the instructions, but I've prepared these slides for you about color separation, and that's changing the, the millions of colors that the computer sees, and it, it sees in a mode called RGB, which stands for red, green, and blue. It's a combination of red, green, and blue lights in my computer screen right now that give a unique color to every pixel. But a printer can't print with all these colors. And a printer prints with dots rather than pixels. So in order to change an image in a raster program like Photoshop or PhotoP from viewing as an RGB file, you have to go to image and mode and you change it from RGB to CMYK color. So when you change it to CMYK, it doesn't look like much changed, but the intention of the CMYK mode in Photoshop, and it's not actually available to you in the browser-based PhotoP program, but the intention of showing it to you in Photoshop, so I'll Command Z, look what happens to the color. So in, in RGB mode, and it says RGB up with the title too, that blue cyan is just a little bit more intense. And when I switch it to CMYK mode, it gets a little washed out. Same thing with the yellows. They're just a little bit, the, it's really subtle, but the oranges and the golden yellows are just a little bit more intense in RGB than in CMYK, but you can see it most clearly in the cyan. So you just lose a little bit of saturation, of intensity of color. And that's because now these print colors, these image colors have been changed to colors that can be mixed with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So just like we looked at in the last video, when we're doing RGB mode, you can isolate the channels, right? So if I isolate the, the blue channel of RGB, this shows me where blue is turned on and where blue is turned off. Blue is turned on everywhere that you have the, uh, the white, and blue is turned off everywhere that you have the black. But light is different than ink. Light can be turned off and dimmed. So this is where blue lights are showing on the computer screen at about half power. 
this is where they're showing up just about 20% power, which is what gives us this blue here, because they're not showing on the other isolated layers up there at all. Oh, there is a little bit of red that shows. And when you add red and blue together, red and blue light, you get the light blue. And that's why there's some blue in this pink. Otherwise, it would just be red. So it's a little confusing. But remember, when you're adding light, all the lights of your computer screen or of your phone or any light-based screen device, white is what uses the most battery power because white means that all the lights are turned on at 100% for all of the pixels. When you change it to CMYK mode, it shows you what a printer sees. And for a printer, white is just not printing anything. And it's instead black. So if we look at this black ridge here and we isolate it, you'll see that black is has 100% cyan ink, has 100% magenta ink, has 100% yellow ink. Actually, it only has about, um, I'd say, 60% yellow ink, and has, of course, 100% black ink. And so all of those layer together to give you the darkest black possible, right? Whereas for the yellows, this makes a little bit more sense, like if you're doing a watercolor painting, is there going to be a lot of cyan in the yellow? Come on. Oh, is my computer going to freeze again? This is what happened. I tried to close everything. Not needed. But they're going to be um, more limited. So in the yellow, which is this, there's very little cyan. There's very little... Or well, there's about half magenta because it's kind of a golden yellow. And then there's a whole lot of yellow. So the yellow is solid black there. And then in the black layer, there isn't any at all. So if we turn on black with yellow, this is what we get. And this is like two layers of printing. Now the order of printing would actually be this. First you'd print yellow, but it doesn't look yellow when it's isolated. And then you would print magenta on top of it, so you get the mix of yellow with magenta. And then you would put cyan on top of that, so you get the yellow mixed with the magenta mixed with the cyan, and that gives you the full color range. But notice it doesn't have a lot of pop. It doesn't have a lot of contrast. And so even though those are all the colored inks, you add a black ink on the top. And that's your line art on an old comic book that's your, your full bleed, like solid blacks, and that separates it out. Now, here's the problem. The computer can see gradations, but inks do not exist with gradations. So in order to print it, you have to create gradations within those inks, that cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. And there's various ways you can do that. You can do it with what's called an indexed dither or a sand pattern which tries to look very random, and it breaks up the, the ink into these discrete little pixels. It's a lot like how Dissolve works as a, as a layer style or as a blending mode for your layers. And then the, the kind of classic mechanical way is called halftone dots, which are named after Benjamin Day. So they're called Bin Day dots, and it separates in what's called a halftone pattern, which is like bricks on a wall. And they're called halftone because you have one line. This is the classic 45 degree black halftone. You have one line and then you move it by half and you start the other line. And then you move it by half and you start the next line. So they stack on top of each other. So how do we make this print ready? How do we separate these channels into the inks? Well, first we have to isolate them. So if I isolate cyan, you'll see that it just gives me the black. But let's do it in order. So let's start with yellow. And yellow, I'm going to change into no longer gradations. So I'm going to change its mode first to grayscale and flatten the image and discard the other channels. Then I'm going to change the mode to bitmap mode. 
and bitmap mode only allows for solid black and solid white pixels. And so then Photoshop will ask me, how do you want to convert it? And I can convert it with a diffusion pattern, right? With a custom pattern, with a pattern dither. I can just split it 50% threshold, and that will just make it a solid shape, right? Or I can do halftone, which is kind of the classic. So I go to mode, I, I change grayscale to bitmap, and I'll do it with a halftone screen at 300 pixels per inch, because that's print quality. I want to make it really visible, so I'll keep it at 20. That shows like how many dots you'll see per inch. And then I want to use um, yeah, a round shape. And there you see. That's the bitmap of just the yellow. And then that's what I would give to the printer for the yellow screen. But in order to do it digitally, I would then have to change the mode back to grayscale and then keep the size ratio one to one so that nothing softens. So it, it still stays a bitmap image with only solid pixels, like solid inks on white paper. Then I replace all of the black. So I use magic wand and select all of the black and I change my mode from grayscale to CMYK color. And that allows for me to color it. And then I'm going to fill it with a custom color, which is going to be Pantone yellow. Let's just say it's this exact yellow, which is the primary ink that's in your printers. Right. And there you have it. Now we have the CMYK layer just for yellow. There isn't anything else on any other layer. And then you save that as its own layer. And then you build the others for cyan, magenta, and black in the same way. Now I have optimized this and programmed it in using what's called actions in Photoshop. So it's all technical. You all just need to know what you're doing and you know that you need to put the, the screens at different angles. So yellow would actually not be 45 degrees it would be at 90 degrees. And I have uh, automated them all into what's called an action. And this is these are my custom actions. These are available to you should you want to download them for yourself, all my custom actions uh, in the Dropbox part of the course, and you'll see that in our links page. But I'm going to do a, a cyan, magenta, yellow, black, a CMYK full run on this image. And I'm just going to hit play. And it's going to automate and do all that stuff. What I just showed you for yellow, it's going to do for all four. And it's going to combine them. So I have, I have the black layer. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I don't need that as a separate file. Because my action also saves them all as separate files. It has the magenta layer. I don't need that anymore. It has the yellow layer. I don't need that anymore. And it has... This, the cyan layer, I don't need that anymore. The one I want is the one that combines them all together. It has them as separate layers. So I have a white background, just like you have white printing paper. And then I have, I have it in my own custom order. Because I have a history with, with silk screening and separating out my own channels for for print jobs and for t-shirts, things like that. And I found that my preference is to actually print in this order. So on your white paper, I print cyan first at 100% opacity. So that means I mix the ink to be fully opaque. Then I print magenta over the top of that, but the magenta is only at 66% opacity, which means I print the ink or I, I mix the ink to, to have a little bit more um, transparency to it. And then I print the yellow on top of that, which is at an even less opacity, at a 45% opacity. And you can see how they start to mix together. And then I print the black ink at an 80% opacity on top of everything. Now what's interesting is the different angles. So black is the only one that's at 45 degrees. 